Tonight for dinner, we are making a chicken stroganoff. Normally, you guys have probably heard beef stroganoff, but this is kind of a little bit of a cheaper way to make it. We also have a good amount of chicken breasts right now, so I wanted to use those up. I already went ahead and prepped pretty much everything that we need for this recipe. So this is two large chicken breasts that I've cut into approximately one inch cubes. And I've got some spices here in this bowl. So we've got some garlic powder, about a teaspoon, just about a half teaspoon of salt. I have a little bit of pepper, about a fourth teaspoon and about a half teaspoon of paprika. And I just wanna coat the chicken in these spices. So we're gonna Mix all of this in here really well. Now, another thing that we wanna do is dredge this in flour. I'm just gonna do that on a plate. I feel like it's really easy. You can put them in a baggie and shake it all together. Honestly, I could probably just put flour in here and toss it around. on this plate, that's way too much. I was talking and doing this at the same time. Don't need that much at all. Okay. Okay, so we're just gonna take maybe a, uh, what are these called? <laughs> Tongs, a tong full of chicken and then just kind of spread it out. And then right before we go drop these in the pan, we'll toss them around just a little bit to make sure we get flour on each little bit. Now I do need to head over to the stove top at this point. We're going to sear these on all sides. You wanna make a less floury version if you want this to be more gluten-free. You can just take them over to the stove top even without flour and just sear them this that way. This is gonna to help to thicken up the sauce a little bit having that flour in there. Okay, just about a tablespoon of olive oil. All right, let's just flip these over, kind of toss them just a bit in the flour that we have. And I'm gonna do this in batches just because I feel like if you overcrowd the pan, they don't really get that nice sear on them. But I also like to wait until my pan is nice and hot to put these in there. Seems like my pan is nice and hot. Let's take these over and start to sear them. We need to fix our stove. It leans forward. So when I'm doing stuff like this, all the oil goes to one spot. Go ahead and get that next batch in there while that's over there cooking. Okay, now we are cooking these completely. So just continue to toss them around. It takes about three minutes each side or so. Just making sure that you're getting a nice cook on these. So you guys know, normally when I do something like this and we're searing it, we're just searing. We don't have to cook it completely. But in this case, we do want these to be cooked. These are nice and cooked. I'm gonna transfer to a clean plate and get that next batch in. I did turn my heat down just a bit. It was on high. It's now more on a medium high. Let's take a tablespoon of butter and put that into our still hot pan. I did turn it down just a bit. I don't wanna burn the butter. So it's more on a medium low, but we are gonna saute the mushrooms. <laughs> if you are using onion, you'll also wanna saute those at the same time. Just a couple minutes. Let these get a little bit of color and goodness to them. Now I'm gonna add in the garlic and just let that saute for maybe like 30 seconds before we add in our other ingredients. This is just about a clove of garlic. Now in this little bowl, I have a tablespoon of Dijon mustard and a tablespoon of Worcestershire. I just combined them because I ran out of these little glass bowls. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna just pour that in there, mix everything around. So you really just let that cook for about a minute. And then I have two thirds of a cup of chicken. This is bone broth, chicken broth. Add that in and just stir and combine all together. I'm scraping the bottom. As I do this, you can see there's some of that, uh, the bits on the bottom. That right there is that leftover flour from when we were cooking. And that actually helps just add a little tiny bit of thickness to this broth, this, um, the, the sauce that we're making. 
add the chicken back in. And this is just gonna cook for about two minutes, letting it reheat. Doesn't really take a lot of time at all. Once you get going on this one, it really comes together pretty quickly. I do suggest going ahead if you're able to and just go portion things out into little containers with a recipe like this because one step takes 30 seconds. The next step is one minute. This is kind of helpful to already have them all portioned out when you have a recipe that's moving along because then you're, you don't feel like you're all over the place in your kitchen. At this point, the heat is going on low, okay? We're gonna be pretty careful about this next step, but you don't want your heat to be too high because the sour cream, which this is a half cup of sour cream, it can curdle if you have your heat too high. So I usually will just put my heat on low. Everything is already heated through and we're at this point, after I stir this together, we're honestly just ready to eat. So I don't, I just don't leave my heat on high. Stir all of that together and that is your stroganoff. We are gonna serve ours over mashed potatoes. I know traditionally stroganoff is served over noodles, but we have a lot of potatoes right now and I don't want them to go bad. I always like to top this with something like some thyme or parsley, some sort of green on the top because it looks really pretty. Okay, so we're just gonna do, go back up to medium low, let this cook for about one minute, let that sour cream come up to temperature and then we are ready to eat. All right, let's give this a try. Still pretty hot. That's really good flavor. Excellent flavor. It's a great substitution if you are trying to look for a more economical way to do this recipe. Maybe beef just isn't in your budget right now, but honestly, y'all, this is chicken breasts. It's, they're cooked to perfection. They're not dry in any way that very, very good. I don't know. It, to me, it's hard to get that beef shogunoff, the beef for the beef shogunoff to not be overdone. This is cooked perfectly and so good. For dinner tonight, we're making honey sriracha chicken bowls. The first thing that we have to do is to cut up some broccoli. I'm just gonna cut these up into florets, the size that we prefer. You can obviously make them as big or as little as you want, whatever your preference is for your family. So you need, I'm gonna use one full head of broccoli, but it's totally up to you, the amount. If you wanna add more, definitely feel free to add more. Now, I already have some shredded carrots that I'm gonna add into this. You don't have to add carrots, you don't have to add broccoli. You can add whatever you want, but pretty much everything else is gonna happen over at the stove top so we're gonna move over there and get started all right I have my pan heating over here I have my large uh, frying pan we're gonna add about a tablespoon this is avocado oil get that nice and hot in the pan and I'm gonna add in all of the broccoli that we chopped and let's just leave it alone for one to two minutes and start to get a nice coloring on the broccoli Okay, like I said, I already have some shredded carrots. I just store these in my fridge because we eat them every day. So I'm going to add that, just kind of sprinkle it around. Like I said, you can leave these out. You don't have to add it. Another option could be red bell pepper. That would be really pretty in here. While this is cooking, I'm just gonna add a little bit of garlic powder, maybe a teaspoon and the same with onion powder. Just a bit of onion powder. We're just gonna add a little bit of flavor. Oh, and this is a new one. Now it's been sitting like this for a few minutes. Let's go ahead and start that stirring. Start to get some color on the other sides. We need to set these vegetables just on a plate so we can cook up our ground chicken. So I'm gonna transfer them to this plate. We're using this ground chicken right here. We're gonna put it into our frying pan and just get that cooking. And then while it's cooking, we'll make up our sauce that's gonna go all over this. We've got this sweet Thai sauce, which you guys have seen us use many times. We need about a fourth cup. And to that, I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of honey. You guys know I like to do this just by looks. Depending on the amount of heat that you want in this, you're gonna do two to three tablespoons of sriracha. Just about two tablespoons of soy sauce. We're adding some of our favorite ginger paste. I like to add maybe two teaspoons.
Okay, let's get that stirred together. Our chicken is almost fully cooked. Okay, let's add in the sauce and stir it around. Now we wanna be careful not to burn it. So I'm going to a medium low heat, but we do wanna allow, allow it to thicken up a bit, which it's already pretty thick, so that shouldn't be an issue. We'll just let this cook for a few minutes. Let's add back in the vegetables and stir all of that together. And once all this is reheated through again, it's pretty much ready to serve. We are gonna serve ours over rice, but you could choose however you wanna serve this, obviously just depending on your needs and the things that you like. Now, if you're not a fan of ground chicken, obviously you can use ground turkey, ground beef. There's plenty of options that you can use to substitute with this meal. I like all the colors that I'm seeing. Ours does have a little bit of that kick because of, the, because of the sriracha. If you want less, obviously add in less sriracha because nothing else in this added additional spice. But the flavors are really good. I like, I personally really like the balance of flavors here. The saltiness and then some of the sweetness from the sweet Thai chili sauce and stuff like that. The, this is a great option for dinner. We are going to make these meatballs that have this lemony orzo that go with it, delicious. I'm actually gonna be using ground chicken. You can use ground turkey, ground beef, ground whatever it is that you enjoy. We're gonna use chicken because that's what I had available. And tonight, actually, my husband is not here. So I'm going a little less on the peppers and stuff just because we're not gonna need quite as much. So adjust to whatever it is that you feel like you'll need. Let's just slice these up. This is another example of the style of dinner that is just kind of our preference. Um, the type of flavors, absolutely, that we enjoy, but also we love having the type of dinner like this where there's toppings that you can kind of just choose from. So maybe not everybody in your household likes Kalamata olives, then they can leave those out, but the people that enjoy them can use them. So I'm just gonna slice these. Also, while I do that, my oven is currently preheated to 400 degrees, and I've got a pot over on the stove that has some water in it. I'm starting to get that to boiling so that we'll be able to cook up that orzo. I'm gonna give these just a little bit of a drizzle with, oh, I forgot, I, I always forget I have my sprayer. And let's put some salt on these and just do one of these numbers. Okay, really, really simple here. And I'm gonna lay these just all over my dish. Okay, set this to the side because we need to make up our meatball mixture. I have one pound of ground chicken here and this is about a half cup of breadcrumbs, panko, whatever your preference is. Add all of those. Is that an orzo in there? Yup. Add in about a half teaspoon or so of, uh, maybe a little more, it's probably like a teaspoon of minced garlic. One egg, already prepped and ready to go. A decent amount of oregano, so at least a teaspoon, maybe more, just depending on the flavors that you really enjoy. But I'm gonna add a good amount, probably closer to two teaspoons, but we really like oregano, especially in these kind of like Mediterranean, lemony type of flavors, love it. Let's add a touch of salt. And I'm gonna be adding some pepper. Not too much. I'm gonna be using my herb scissors to cut up some parsley. So this is fresh parsley. That is definitely my recommendation for this if you're able to access fresh parsley. Also, let me show you guys a little tip. If you purchase fresh parsley, or maybe you um, grow some in your garden, that's what I'm actually working on fresh, par fresh parsley in my garden right now, um, So because we use it a lot. I keep mine in the refrigerator just like this. So you just take it, add a little bit of water into your cup, chill it just like this in the refrigerator, and then every few days or so I change out the water and they stay fresh for so long. Obviously, if you're growing parsley, or mint or what, I mean, whatever the herb is. If you're growing it, it's probably better to just leave it on the plant, but if you've already cut it, this is a great way to just store it right in the fridge like this. Okay, let's start to mix this together. 
I'm gonna take my one and a half tablespoon scoop here and you can obviously roll these around and form them so that they look really perfect. But if you just wanna use your scoop and just scoop them straight onto the pan, you don't even have to do the extra work and effort unless of course you want them to look beautiful and perfect. Also, I don't think I've shared them with you. I'll try and put them on the screen if I can find them. We bought some pre-made meatballs the other day at Sam's Club because I was looking for a really quick lunch option. Um, so a lot of times I prep our lunches ahead of time. I'll make them for a couple of days at a time. And then that way we can just pull them out of the fridge and reheat. And that's, that's a very common thing in our house. Just because I... I scrounge for lunches, you guys. So if I don't have something made, then I'm just raiding the pantry to try and find something. So I found these pre-made meatballs at Sam's Club and they are so delicious. But sometimes you just come across a fantastic product and for sure, that was one of them. Also, I love, I, see, I'm a big fan of meatballs. I actually really enjoy them. And I also like the fact that if you make too many, you can freeze them, you can have them for lunch. They usually reheat really well. I like them a lot. So this one's kind of a sheet pan meal. We're just adding some more stuff to it. These are gonna go in that 400 degree preheated oven. I'm gonna check them at around 17 to 18 minutes. I'm thinking they're gonna take 20 to 22, but we'll check them just based on their size. Obviously all that time depends on the size of the meatballs that you make. So let's, let's get these in there. My apologies, I thought I was recording and I was not. I added one and one third cup of orzo here into this water and we're gonna let this cook just until it's al dente. It usually takes under 10 minutes, but we'll watch it just to kind of see how it is. I also had salt in that water too. While the meatballs are cooking, oh, I need to set a timer. Okay, timer's on. While the meatballs are cooking and the orzo is cooking, I'm gonna make up the feta kind of drizzle that we're using. I have about a half cup of Greek yogurt here. This is plain, it's non-fat. You can use full fat, it doesn't matter, it's totally fine. And I'm gonna add some feta cheese to this. So I like a lot of feta in ours, but let's say about a half cup. Just start to mix that. Probably could have used a little bit bigger of a bowl. Unfortunately though, this is the uh, bulk of, this is the most amount that we'll be adding. Add about a tablespoon of oil. This is avocado oil. Use whatever your preference is on that. And I like to stir this um, ingredient by ingredient, just making sure that consistency stays where I want it. Or, cause then I can see, okay, do I need to add more oil? Should I add more vinegar? What do I need to add to this to kind of get it to be where I want it to be? I'm gonna add a touch of lemon juice. Let's do about two teaspoons. I also really like to add red wine vinegar. This is not in some of the recipes that I've seen uh, for this kind of thing, but I think that red wine vinegar just makes this really good. So teaspoon and a half-ish. And this is gonna help to kind of thin it out a bit because the thinner you make it, the easier it is to drizzle. So obviously you can just like plop a spoonful on the top of your bowl and that's totally fine. If you want to make it a drizzle, then you're gonna wanna thin it out a little bit. And you can do that with water too. I'm adding garlic powder. Feel free to use minced garlic, about a half teaspoon-ish or so. And then actually, let's just go ahead and add our oregano, love oregano. I'm gonna add at least a teaspoon. And then I really like to add dill to this, even though you don't need it. There's just something about that lemony Greek-ish flavors. I just feel like dill takes it next level. We definitely need some salt, so add a pinch of that. And I'm gonna be adding pepper. Oh, love the smell of that dill. See what our consistency looks like. It's definitely not at a, at a drizzling consistency, but again, if you want it to be thinner, you can add a little bit of water and it's totally fine. Okay, the orzo is done. Let's drain that. And then we're gonna go back into the pot. Okay, so this is kind of like a lemony orzo. I'm gonna add a touch of butter. That's even less than a tablespoon. You can add more though. Feel free to add whatever you need. And then I'm gonna add about two tablespoon, maybe not even, maybe more like a tablespoon and a half of um, lemon juice. Mix that together. 
And we have our nice lemon orzo. If you have a fresh lemon, add in some of the, oh, what you call it? The peel, the rind, you know, when you, oh my goodness, the zest in here, and that's gonna even make it more lemony. I'm gonna add some of the dressing that we made to the center. Obviously, like I said, feel free to thin that out and then you can add that. Let's add some meatballs. I didn't even count how many I made, but I'm thinking like four to five per bowl is a good amount. And then some peppers. And then I love Kalamata olives. Gotta have some of those. Add a little bit more of this cause it's pretty and top that off with some more parsley just for some additional bright green. Little insider tip in my house here, whenever we just don't know what we're gonna have for dinner, I often opt for bowls. Any type of bowl like this where you can throw in the ingredients that you love. It's easy to make, everybody can pick what they love out of it. I just love a meal like this. Fantastic flavor. You get some of that lemon, just a little bit. Like I said, add a little bit of zest and it's gonna give more of a pop of lemon, but the meatballs are so well flavored, so, so good. And this right here, that takes it over the top. You definitely don't wanna make this without that sauce because it is delicious. But the meatballs are cooked perfectly. Just for reference, these are one and a half table, no, yeah, one and a half tablespoon meatballs. I cooked them for 21 minutes. Okay, so just for reference, they're perfectly cooked. If you're not a fan of orzo, you can make this with rice too, or you can make it in a salad and just put the meatballs and everything on top of a salad. Our verse today comes from 1 Peter 3, eight through nine. Finally, all of you be like-minded, sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're new here, I would love if you would subscribe and stick around, hit that red subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can know each time I post a new video. Check out the video that I have listed above. This is the one that you should definitely watch next. I hope you're having a great week.